This is the October 2022 SCURF SourceCred Guild Report. And here is a quick overview of what we're going to discuss today, a review of how to opt in, a re recap of last month, a little bit of extra information just to review on how to find the past guild meeting resources um, because it's been we've been running this for a few months now and there are we are kind of building a list of resources um we have a new a quick comment on a process step that we're doing each month i just wanted to make note of and we're going to then review the payout numbers and lastly host an open discussion for a couple of topics that we'll we'll go through when we get there if at any time anybody has any questions or comments, you know, feel free to interrupt me. Happy to turn this into an open conversation as we move through it. First of all, if you would like to follow along with the calendar of events that SCURF currently is offering, you can find that at scrf.io forward slash calendar. And again, here is today's meeting agenda issue on GitHub. And this is a great place to take the conversation um, if you want to follow up with anything that you may have said or anything that you may have heard and make more comments about it, uh, this is the place that we would like for that to happen. Okay, great. So I'll turn this over to uh, Paul for a quick rundown on what exactly SourceCred is and its relationship to us as an organization. Sure. Uh, so. I don't know if it'll be exactly what source cred is, because that could be a much longer uh, discussion. Uh, but in essence, <laughs> source cred is a open source uh, piece of software that uh, basically uh, runs very similar to PageRank. Uh, and many of us are familiar with PageRank. Uh, but instead of ranking page, it is ranking contributions to something. Uh, in this instance at SCURF, we have this instance running on our forum. And essentially what it is doing is as people produce content on the forum, respond to content on the forum, like content on the forum, uh, this algorithmically is creating what is known as cred, right? So this is the currency, the in-currency, or probably not currency, the scorekeeping metric uh, for source cred as a piece of software uh, that then basically says this individual is producing this amount of cred and this much cred is kind of flowing through it through the various interactions that are happening with that person's content um, and then at scurf what we are basically doing is taking that percentage and incentivizing good um, forum behavior and contributions uh, by the using this guild to do an allocation of at this point 5,000 die uh, that then gets distributed to people who have participated on our forum uh, by way of percentage of the cred that they have produced. Um, there is a little bit more uh, than that that is going on behind the or under the hood, which is partially also what this guild is responsible for doing, which is as a community um, figuring out is this incentivizing the type of behavior that we intend to incentivize? Um, are we able to basically kind of manage our own small, but still not insignificant treasury um, to make sure that uh, content on the forum is what we would like that content to be, while also recognizing that good content, uh, it takes some work. And so that's why we'd like to uh, put some money into it. Um, so that's kind of where we are at right now when it comes to how our source cred, or overall, the philosophy of source cred and SCURF at the at the current time. OK, thanks for that. Um, let's go ahead and continue on. So I wanted to first draw attention to where you can find kind of a lot of the information that we have available um, for source cred as it relates to the SCURF organization. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to show this on screen now. So this is the document that we've developed and has a lot of links and URLs, uh, information on how to opt in and so forth. Um, there's some good information here. As you scroll down, oh, I need to update this presentation. This is kind of what I was going to as well talk about is where to find um, the historical records of old presentations, recordings, and other things that we have for you to review. And this is where you would find that information. And we do our best to keep this document updated over time. One of the other things that we've done and I've recently changed was how we um, show historical payout information. And this is all have to, has to do 
with the cred rate percentages. And so um, before it was all just sort of listed out and now it is, uh, you, we just like a little bit of change here, but it makes it easier to read and scroll through that you just open the table like that for each each month. So if you're curious to know what the record of our um, cred ranking calculations are, this is where you can find that information as well. So let me go ahead and go back. Um, so how do you participate? Well, rather not really participate, but how do you uh, basically opt in to receive payment for participating? Go to our Discord, which you can join by the URL scrf.io forward slash Discord, and then navigate to our SourceCred opt-in channel, which also has its own URL, which is scrf.io forward slash sc-opt-in. If you're logged into Discord on your phone or your computer and you type that URL, it should take you directly to the source cred opt-in channel within Discord. Yeah. Once you're there, there's two steps to take. The first step you only have to do once, which is to fill in the first step um, completion form, sorry, the first time opt-in form. This is how we get your wallet so that when it comes time to do the payout, we know where to send the money. We don't collect any um, information beyond your fo the forum name on Discourse and the Discord username. So we need those three pieces of information. Lastly, every single month, you have to register for the payment by going and clicking on the little uh, ticket icon, which is a reaction role. Um, I'll go ahead and let him in. Great. And once you do those three steps, you are ready to receive payment. And then again, the only step you have to do every month is the third step, which is to uh, do the reaction roll. We want to maintain um, an active participation so that people who receive payouts are opting to receive payouts. And the uh, implication of that is there is a lot of source cred that goes unclaimed. And that is something that we return to the community in payment. So it's an important process of how our payment model works. Okay, so last month um, we we also held the same meeting in September. We hold it every every month on the second Friday at one p.m. And the purpose of these guild meetings is to discuss in a community based way how we are running SourceCred and to discuss the action items and to define the action items. Um, so these are, these are oops, I have a trailing P here on my number two. I need to edit that. I'll, I'll do that later. <laughs> I forgot. I wonder what I was going to write there. Probably something important, I'm sure. Um, but at any rate, these are some of the things that we've been actively talking about. So um, we, if any of these topics um, are something that you might want to uh, contribute and help us out with, uh, let us know. You can We can jump in on the issues and tackle those topics. Um, but let me go ahead and just keep going forward if there aren't any comments. OK, great. Uh, yeah, Chris. Yeah, I'm looking at the September. Is JC McGurk and James McGee the same person? Because that's where I'm like, yeah. I don't know if James is like, I know he's probably got two accounts, but I don't. I don't think he would try to get double payment, which is where I'm like. Interesting. Let me tell. Take a look. Hold on. Uh, I haven't noticed. I immediately noticed that because that's where I'm like, hang on. And the source cred scores are nearly. I mean, they're not the same, which is also indication that they're not the same account. Which is where I'm like, I know of all people to try to game the system, James wouldn't be the one. Which is where I'm like, why would then? this appear this way if it unless it was yeah. just like reporting the top rank even though he's so are you talking about twice. september oh you see you see what i'm saying yeah hold on let me actually um double reference that on on the actual payout uh spreadsheet because that's yeah let me that's a good catch because if we go back and look at august for example we don't have that right it, um, I, I immediately saw it, which is where yeah. we no, it's a good, that, it's a good sign. And this is like, like why we <laughs> want it to be transparent. Yeah. Um, so let me, um, let me actually, 
I need to actually look more closely at the spreadsheet. Um, and so rather than holding the uh, meeting hostage, I'd like to go to the discussion um, tab and let um, maybe, Paul, you can kind of run with the conversation a little bit. And then we'll kind of circle back a little bit after I had a chance to look at more closely. Does that sound good? OK, cool, because uh, we are right here. So here, here is the open discussion. I tried my best to distill some of the thoughts that you had, Paul, down into, into, into this. Um, but if you look at the agenda, I have an even more sloppy version of this that's <laughs> like a little bit more longer form. So hopefully between those two things. Uh, anyway, I'll turn it over to you for, for now. Yeah, so currently the way that we are doing disbursements is there's the total amount of um, the total amount of die that can, gets distributed to everybody who's opted in. Uh, and then there is the return pool. So the return pool is essentially uh, all of the unclaimed die that uh, people who, for various reasons, are not doing the reaction role. And so they're not taking that die. Um, that we have been kind of doing this 50 50 split um and then uh, rolling it into things like oh yeah go ahead brian so i just want to uh put everything to rest and quickly say i looked at the actual uh spreadsheet and the payout uh csv file and what i did was copied from a different month and it's an extra line item that needs to be deleted, and it was not present in the payout scheme for this month. So that is a erroneous copy and paste from me in the records and not part of the actual payout model. But good catch. So I'll fix that and get that mm -hmm. updated. Thanks. That is good. Uh, yeah, so we've been kind of doing the split and then looking at participation uh, and non-participants. And basically, the disbursement rule up to this point has been uh, we've been trying to get attention for source cred wanting people to join source cred and that's kind of i shouldn't say that that's like the only thing that we've been interested in obviously we have some interest in is source cred doing for our community what we mean for it to do uh, but up to this point uh, there's been a we're taking a look at this historically and does the instance itself incentivize the types of behaviors so creating content right right now ours is a little bit oriented towards creating content versus um, responding to content and things like that but i think that we could potentially look at some additional new models of how we can split some stuff up so in the september meeting i think i may have brought this up um, and i'd like to very strongly advocate uh, for some type of a hybrid model especially in the month of october because we now have the writer's cohort actively happening. And the way our current source cred distribution model would work is even if you were in the writing cohort and you are producing just a lot of content, it's high quality content and people are liking it, it's not getting flagged, it's not getting deleted and all that type of stuff, you are certainly increasing your cred. But over the life of SCURF, which is how we run our source cred numbers, you are making a dent, but not a massive dent, right? So disproportionately already, I think, um, in the month of October, um, we've certainly had some people who are not in the cohort contributing on the forum, but disproportionately the forum has been um, being responded to and interacted with by people in the writing cohort, producing a lot of value for us. So I was thinking what we could do is basically run two instances with different time frames. Uh, so run the instance the way that we typically do. So we get the all-time scores. That all-time score, we do our standard method of you know, anyone who hasn't uh, claimed their die, that goes into the return pool. Uh, but this time, uh, I'd like us to maybe do a split of that return pool first. Um, and then run another instance of source cred where it's the last month. So I believe that the time increments that we can use is week, the last week, the last month, and then all time. I don't. I think that those are the the time units. Right. So we run that last month. Fifty percent of the return pool allocation then goes to that last month. So if you have law if you've uh, done your um opt-in for the last month 
um, then you would get this additional 50% of the return pool. Then the remaining 50% of that first split, so the remaining 25%, right? That's my math thing correctly. Uh, then that does the uh, kind of standard thing that we have traditionally been doing with the return pool, which is to active and then to the people who are just kind of opting into source cred. Um, that would mean that people who have been particularly active in the month of October would probably get a sizable payment. Uh, and the people who have not been active at all, uh, right now, I think, what are they at? 38 die. Um, I don't know what that would actually drop to, but I'm just going to guesstimate. Maybe that will cut that in half right? so that the reward for not being on our forum, but knowing that there is an opportunity to just kind of show up for um, some die by clicking a reaction roll, um, that that is increasingly, or that is a diminishing return. Active um, participation on the forum gets more of a return, which I think is what we are ultimately interested in, um, and that we are kind of doing some mixture between all-time impact, which when we were initially implementing source cred was incredibly important to us because we are trying to have long tail conversations, and so we should reward things in long tail ways, uh, but also recognizes that as SCURF grows and changes and different um, people roll into SCURF over time, that we don't want to have such an embedded advantage for having once been part of, uh, once been very active at SCURF, uh, but maybe less so now. Um, so I, I, that's kind of where my thoughts are uh, when it comes to a distribution model. However, we can do some other stuff too, right? So there's other potential models. Um, we could have a faster decay rate. We could change the, um, we could change some of the nodes. We could change oh, yeah. some of the edge, right? Like, so I'd like us to potentially think about what are some other ways that we could do this. Um, overall though, I think that we want to, to me, what we want to be encouraging is are you participating on the forum now and producing value to the forum now? And um, also making sure that we keep an incentive of you don't just show up for like a week. Just absolutely go um, spammy on our forum and then you get to reap those rewards forever. Um, instead, I think we want to make sure that people who have added value in the past and now continue to get rewarded for those and people who are just um showing up saying hi and getting out um that that is not unnoticed but not as rewarded ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, yeah we also talked about the normalizing discourse trust levels which we have not tried to do that yet uh, but i'm interested what those results would be oh yeah i want to second that in that um i remember seth uh suggesting that bi-weekly model or a more uh recent assessment of the cred as a way to promote the short-term participation in addition to the long tail um so i definitely think having and and additionally as you're saying in the 50 percent um giving it more preference to the uh monthly pool i do think would reinforce the notion of encouraging active participation rather than just uh getting the source or the the die because you signed up for source cred so i also think that it could be an interesting narrative that we can weave into social media as just kind of putting my marketing hat on as a way to help drive awareness not only to source cred but a way uh, a, a sort of a targeted way to get the message out that we're acknowledging and seeking kind of new content and that if you know it might entice people to say that you have a chance to come and make a difference in this special promotion yeah chris go ahead okay so Oops, that's a that's a no worries um that's a great idea and i think a good way to approach that is to um present what's been paid out and what gets paid out monthly but also specifically approach writers and not just anyone and i think if we are very specific and if we're like approaching um coindesk coin telegraph authors 
tweeting at them or putting posting in LinkedIn, whatever, directly, but publicly, so that it's acknowledging, like, hey, we know you're a writer, um, but we've also I know um these organizations don't they don't really pay that well, which is why they have to produce like 250 word articles, but do like five or six of them a day. Whereas if they knew posting a, a topic on scurf would get them a longer term engagement they do both it's not like they're going to stop writing for coin telegraph but i guarantee you some of them will start posting on scurf and that's what i mean there's like an industry group of and not, not a group but a demographic of writers that are independent but also affiliated with organizations in a way that appears as if they are or would be loyal to that organization but in this space everyone is like working to promote themselves at the core um at the end of the day so it's not going to be uncouth i think to start approaching writers specifically instead of just putting it out and hoping writers show up it's like no we should specifically uh, and directly address them with the uh, with the express like history of how we've done it with the idea that it's like we're not just trying to pay you we're trying to get the best quality output in the process and it's like i think that there's going to become people who come in and try to spend the process always even down to um when we had the people who were like clearly using ai writing to make their summaries and it's like that's gonna happen but as long as we're moderating and attempt to prevent those people from being able to get away with it throughout the course of a month then it's not really actually a a, a big problem um would you would uh i think this warrants a follow-up meeting with discovery um i made a ping on the issue comment i summarized a little bit of what you said there and i i tagged discovery uh the team on there so maybe somebody over there will see it and join the issue but if not i'll try and mention this to maria in my meet with her next week and it would be cool if maybe some somebody interested here especially you know chris if you'd like to maybe chat with them and, and share your perspective on how we can align the marketing to what you're saying because i think it's a very powerful narrative that you're really honing in on and that's the type of stuff where you get like really good synergy between you and the marketing folks who know how to condense that into a tweet. So, <laughs> you know, that'll be really great, I think. So, so in addition to the disbursement model, um, I also, I mean, we, so we have not, I think at all, changed node or edge weights um since we've implemented this is that correct that's correct um and so i'd also be kind of interested to you know maybe it is about time we have enough kind of data we see general patterns of um cred percentage um and i think right now our current I think our current leaderboard or the thing that we put out as a leaderboard shows payout, not cred, right? Where is that? Where'd that thing go? Um, but we might want to just look at does this, especially once we start doing things on a monthly basis or if we ran a monthly instance, does that board look like what we think happened on uh, the forum when it comes to valuable content produced um so i'm pretty certain everyone who is in this meeting is on the forum enough ish to probably have a qualitative sense of here where the really high quality conversations were uh and i have like you know six or seven people in mind uh who were the participants and let's say this last month and we would maybe in a monthly instance just say like hey do the cred scores match up? Um, are there other pieces of data that we would need to be able to do what we would yeah. consider a meaningful assessment of 
our edge weights and our nodes, um, the node weights and um, what might people want to bias towards or explore biasing towards? Yeah, Chris. So in that the source cred is the quantitative, I think this is where we do include the qualitative aspect of um, the comment section of the responses to the people who are ranked in that um, it's clear when someone's like excited or expressing gratitude for the post or expressing that it enlightened them and gave them new information. Um, so I think that is where we want quantitative and qualitative information informing how we are presenting this information such that when, especially in the like months rankings, having the recognition of the recent months posters is I think going to encourage people to come in um, with the understanding that you can come in and make an impact and then SCURF will recognize that as something separate than the people who are clearly long-term impactful but there's not we can present it as a competition but we can also present it as we are trying to recognize contribution not make this um a zero-sum game because ultimately while the die pool is a technically it's a positive sum game in that everyone is basically making money from the die pool that they because you the lowest thing you have to do is participate it's actually a positive sum game for everyone who plays so we're we're cre we've created a positive sum game in which all you have to do is play and you're guaranteed to win but the issue is if you try to game it that's the only way to lose because ultimately um we're trying to make the transparency move towards a certain outcome and the people who try to game it and get discovered attempting to game it are the only ones that actually have any possibility of losing out um so this is a very different game that we're creating we're, we're creating compared to the other games in which people participate by putting in money there's an entrance fee and then it starts to become a zero-sum game well it's like things like poker or uh any sort of gambling where you have to put money up to win it ends up becoming a zero-sum game as long as there's not any extra input to put it above what everybody puts in equally um which is ultimately when we're talking about game theory and trying to encourage specific outcomes one of the things that has happened in video games specifically is that you get rewarded even if you lose so it's like what we've been taught about losing and winning is not actually necessarily the best way to reinforce behavior so it's like even if people aren't writing the best content you don't take the reward away maybe reducing the reward because they're not as quality as someone else is in is in order but that's not the same as punishing them for having bad quality and i think if we're framing it such that we have people here to help the writing get better so if people write poorly or if they are bad at constructing their argument we'll help you get better at that so that's not what we're we're not worried about if you come here and aren't able to do something up to our level that's not an issue because we'll help you get to our level just as long as you demonstrate that it's not here just for the money and even if it is just for the money if you're acting in good faith and not breaking the rules then there's nothing wrong so i think that's where it's like all these things create an environment which is completely different than everything out there right now that can then be presented as 
this is something that uh, pe- uh, organizations within the space would want to foster as a means of encouraging better writing, but also encouraging better output and discussion on subjects that need to have people who are qualified, but also uh, the users of those things in injecting their perspectives while also getting compensated uh, accordingly. Uh, one thing I wanted to immediately react to was um, how how can we quantify some of th- some of what you're talking about? Um, and I was thinking that what we have now are snapshots. I mean, we have about six or seven months or whatever of payment data. And if we can identify somebody who who has kind of risen up over the months, who started at zero and now they're at like I don't know one or two or three percent, and to sort of show um a relative growth or a rise within our system by doing comparative analysis from from each snapshot that's a more interesting thing to tease out than just looking at everything over time in one one snapshot so um you know now that we have a little bit of historical data we can try to look at that and i was thinking of um i know that there have been people in our audience that have identified themselves as sort of like data nerds or whatever. Um, and if there is anybody out there, I would love to have a chat with you about how we might do that or how we might tell a story from the data. I have some kind of simplistic thoughts, but I'm this is kind of outside my domain of like, I don't know. I mean, I can come up with something, believe me, I will. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it's sort of like, I probably would be better served by somebody who really knows and is passionate about like, data science or whatever um the the only way to actually make it an experiment is to establish the control and then the variable and in this case the variable would have to be the one month slice in that otherwise we'd be changing too many variables all at once and it wouldn't be uh like the methodology wouldn't be sound you really can only change like one variable at a time um if you're trying to discover if something is oh, cool. causative or if there's even a correlation. Uh, so yeah, that's perfect. Matthew, you know, he went from zero and he said he's at around 1.4 now. Yeah. So like, that's, that's great. And it'd be cool. It would be good to just identify like a handful of the folks who have a similar like data metric. And then we can kind of show how, you know, with a graph, or whatever, some kind of. I'm good. I am good at making graphs that look nice, but I'm not necessarily at generating the numbers that go into them. <laughs> but at any rate, just a thought. And also, as a guild and organization, to this point, because we've used it for our um, distribution model, um, we've pretty much paid attention only to percent of the total cred. Uh, that has been minted and is moving around on our forum. Um, I wonder if we might be able to do something with the raw cred. I mean, mm-hmm. so what could we potentially be using that for? Um, I know there's been some... Um, I think that there was some discussion, and maybe this, this may have come from Seth also, um, but I think... You know, we could say like, here is um, here's the minimum cred score you need to have, uh, and we pay out on, or we could make tiers based on the cred score that you have. Um, I'm going to use a golf analogy, right? Like, where's our cut, right? So here's the instead of doing it by percentage, um, we could, you know, say here is as cred increases by, I don't know how much a month overall in our system, which I think we've also now looked at before. Um, but, you know, as total cred, like how much of that new cred made um, is going to go to what people, right? like who's, uh, maybe who's um, responsible for moving our total cred score um, as an organization across or uh, higher, right? Um, which I think that monthly slice would or not monthly slice. Yeah, monthly slice uh, would do more of. Um, so things along those lines, kind of just taking a look at the raw, not just the percentages. I, I really uh, 
I really like your thought there, Chris. I just wanted to jump in and say, like, I think, mm-hmm. like, I could probably figure out how to answer some of those basic questions. I don't think it would be too hard because really it's just cla- like combining the data together. And maybe I can take a first stab of it and then, you know, we can do a little meet and like talk about it or something. Cool. Okay. Um, is there anything else to follow up on? I wanted to also make sure we check on time and finish the fundamental slides. So we still have, uh, yeah, we're still have a little bit of time, but I um, let me just kind of rewind really quick and mention one other extra step that we're doing in our monthly process is I'm taking screenshots of the opt-in list so that we can double check in case there's any confusion about um, about that list. So moving forward, I'll have that as an extra resource that we can double check against. Um, and yeah, so the monthly numbers, we never actually got to that. So here's the numbers for this month. Um, again, you can find the history of that in the repo that I linked to earlier. Um, but uh, yeah, we got one thing I like is that we got the die slippage back down. I always try to keep that as close to zero as possible. Um, yeah, so I'm, you know, we're kind of just on the sake of time. I think that if you'd like to review the numbers, you can, but there's really not much to comment. I think that it's very similar. It's been moving in the same trajectory. So it's very, we're having similar results, but just more participation in general. So I guess that's worth commenting on that. Like, if one thing to note is that the global individual return has been going down every month, which is because it's been spreading out over more, over more people. Yeah, exactly. And also we're getting more contributors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's slowly going in that direction, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and then here's the breakdown of how it flows through the chart. Again, um, I've, I've shown this a lot, and if you wanna actually understand the, the math at each step, then review the skill sprint that we did uh, back at the end of August, uh, which is, you can get straight to the recording on that URL that I have on the screen here. And it not, not only do I demonstrate how do I run the source code algorithm, but I also provide links to uh, a bunch of resources um, on how we do the the spreadsheet stuff too. So um, that would be a really good place to get started if you actually want to, uh, if you're really serious about exploring these payout models that we're talking about and actually contributing, this would be the place to start. And if you have any questions about any of the technical bits, I'm, I'm available on Discord. You can just reach out to me and we can uh, chat about it. And that, I think, circles us back. Yeah, that circles us back to where we were. I just wanted to get those quick items out of the way, and then we can return to the discussion. Thanks. If there is anything else to discuss, that is. Well, it looks like we do have some action items for us to look at. So let me just quickly review some of these things. First of all, I'm really excited about this whole idea of doing a different um, time slice of the payout model. Um, we can kind of steer that into a marketing message, but I think even without that part, we can still take source cred out as a marketing message and start to build an initiative around that to help drive more engagement. And I think that with some of the awesome in, um, comments that Chris would, would make to help build that narrative with our discovery team. Um, so I'll help bring all that together next week. Um, and then we are also talking about um, doing some explore, explorations on analyzing the payment records to, to see how uh, our user experience has been to try to tease out some good gems of that we can spin into the narrative to further reinforce our marketing um, and just tell the story. I mean, I think this has been a success, right? Like. Uh, yeah, we're 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 still flying the party bus, and I think everybody's still partying. So I'm I'm happy with that. So to that end, um, one thing I would like to put on our minds right now. Right? So it's October, but if anyone else is having the year that I'm having, um, I am shocked that it is the middle of October. Actually, um, right? time is hauling. Right, um, a thing that I think I would be very interested from this group or the people who are engaged in kind of the source cred guild in general is um, having some type of year-end assessment. How was source cred 
in the year 2022 for the SCURF community. Um, I think that that would be a fantastic forum post uh, and that uh, probably as the most sophisticated of the guilds that we have so far at SCURF, I think that that just would be a great model of here's what a, a meaning for, here's what a strong guild at SCURF does. Like it kind of does this community governance stuff, uh, works on the tool or whatever it's kind of small scale mission is, uh, but it also reports out at some point to the whole of the organization in a um, kind of assessment type of way. Uh, yeah, so this is, a, this is a real world experiment, right? This is a naturally occurring experiment. Let's tell the world about it. Like we are a research, we're a research organization, right? We're very interested in research. We should be producing some stuff too. And I think that this would be some value. So um, it is already October. And so um, if we want to start to potentially think about what would go into such an assessment, how would we be able to make that assessment, um, things like that, I think that that would be a good idea for us to already start thinking about. Yeah, and you're kind of throwing the gauntlet down too for all the guilds, right? Like, sure am. <laughs> I think just by natural extension, this yeah. is something that we should actually incorporate as a guild report and yep. you know have source cred be chapter one <laughs> or whatever I mean, everyone knows the source cred build guilds the best guild <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man i kind of like the analytics guild but uh i mean that's pretty cool too but i think source cred builds best <laughs> you're right yeah i think ultimately i have to agree with you <laughs> But I think the analytics guild, they, you know, we know how to have fun. We have more fun over there. Right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we talk about numbers, and the and the charts always go up and to the right, right? So, <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know if there's anything else to um, ho hone in on today. I want to thank everybody for your time and coming out here and participating. And I feel like there's really definitely a lot of excitement and energy moving forward into these agenda items that we've outlined today. And I feel like we've got some work to do. So let's let's kind of digest all that over the weekend and um, try to stay connected between now and November, which will be here before we know it. So where do you think the best place for that coordination would be? Is that going to be on this um, GitHub ticket? Is that where? Yeah, you it, yeah, be? because what we'll do is anything that actually springs out from there will become its own. Mm -hmm issue right so this is like a scratch pad to you know collect our ideas and then those ideas will become um solidified in their own issues we'll bring those issues into project boards and and so on and so forth cool all right great well i guess that will be it for today then have a great weekend everybody and thanks for coming out.